Welcome to Stuck, Time to Improv. I'm Mary Scott with Business Drift, and I want startups to be wildly successful. Particularly if you're a tech startup, you need to know what you're doing and where you're going. So today our special guest is Ed Lehu from the Missouri Small Business Development Center. That's what SBDC stands for. And we're going to be talking about the tech business model canvas. Thanks for coming, Ed. Hey, thanks for having me. So why is it important for tech startups to really look at this and participate? Well, because uh, there's a lot of ideas, but not all of them really translate to a business model. So I had did new product development for about 20 years in the consumer product space. And I always ask myself four questions. And that's really kind of what the business model canvas is about. The first question is, what's the problem you're solving? The second one is, who's the customer? And I'll go into those a little more detail. The third one is, you know, how many customers are actually giving money for this? And the last one, the fancy word is, uh, what's your value proposition? But I simply say, how are you solving the problem better than current state that's going to change behavior? Because behavior change is very difficult. So back on the first one, the problem is really the problem in the customer's perspective. Many technical people, particularly tech startups, come from more of a technical background, and they're trying to kind of solve the you know, they're thinking of this as a technical thing, and, and it may have a technical aspect to it, but in the end, you're probably solving a bigger problem than just that piece of it. You're, usually, you're solving a maybe a business problem. We had one client uh, that was actually solving, had developed an app, and in the end, what they found out was really what they were helping the customer do is get paid faster. So they were really into their app. But after doing lots of customer discovery interviews, they learned quickly that really what what really kind of you know, was important to the customer was getting paid faster. The customer also can get complicated. Some industries, I work a lot with medical devices, agriculture, where the customer may not be the user. So typically you have a user, a, cust uh, a payer, and a decider. So, you know, the user is going to be the end user, but they may not pay for it. So in a healthcare scenario, you know, a user might be a physician, could be a patient, and then the, the payer is actually the insurance company. And then in many cases, the in healthcare, they're going to have a buying group or it might be a purchasing agent that's involved with that. So, so there's always kind of a user decider and a purchaser. And then the last one, the value proposition is simply, you probably heard of people talk about their elevator pitch. Well, it's very similar to that. It's like, how, you, how can you articulate in one sentence? That's why I like to use the ad lib value proposition. What what value are you offering to what customer and why? Why is that different than what, particularly getting behavior change? Because behavior change, people way underestimate how difficult that is versus right. the doing in the current state. Right. And one of the things that um, I ask people to have as their first opening to a pitch is that we help these people solve this problem so they can. Bingo, you got it. And it's not about your secret sauce. Nope. It's, a, nope. you know, how you are different, that comes uh, later. But yep. you solve a problem that's real for yep. a specific people who have that problem so that they can make more money, get yep. paid faster, reach exactly. more people, whatever. But most of the customers yeah. care how, you, how the technical stuff works. Yeah, they don't, it's almost like, you know, behind the curtain kind of thing. What they really care is the result that you're going to, that they're going to get. And, um, you know, that, that's a big thing that I try to drive home. Many people want to do what we call death by demo. I want to tell you about my idea. And I'm like, I really don't care about the idea. I care about what's the problem. So we tell people fall in love with the problem, not your potential solution. Exactly. Most, and your customers want to know what's in it for them. Yes. Yep, we call that the woofum. What's in it for me? <laughs> yeah, exactly. So those are things that people really, really need to pay attention to. And your business model canvas does a step-by-step -step, um, yes. thing where people can fill in the blanks and think mm -hmm. about it as they go along, right? Yeah, because most people think they know what the problem is. They've got a hypothesis. Really what they have is unproven hypothesis. So what we do is we walk them through and teach them how to do customer discovery interviews where they go out and they don't talk about their potential solution because they don't really know what it is yet. 
Uh, they might think they think they know what it is, but they really don't. And we get them to get them to get the customer to talk about their problems and ask lots of why, why, why questions. Right. Because so. sometimes the why you may be solving for isn't the biggest pain yeah. point for your customer. It exactly. might be one of them. But if you yep. talk to customers, you may discover there's something else that's even bigger that comes before that. And you may need to team up with somebody to solve that one first. Yep, exactly. And so what kinds of tech folks have you worked with lately? I get quite a range. I have everything from the, uh, you know, Carpenter thinks he's got a new tool, all the way to advanced research scientists at Washington University and everybody in between. And we're taxpayer funded, so we don't charge for our services. We never say it's free. You know, it's... It's the taxpayers investing in you. So in addition to business model canvas, we also help people with market research. We have we have a research arm that can help them find secondary market research to kind of understand the kind of the lay of the land. Um, and then we also help, we assist with small business innovation research grants because many of these tech folks are need to prove this concept, uh, but they really can't approach an angel investor until they've proven it. So the SBIR program, the Small Business Innovation Research program allows for them to apply for a grant. And it's really the federal government that's an angel investor that doesn't take equity. So you know they, they want their money back in tax revenue. Because you're going to create a job, you're going to create a company and create jobs. And that's that's the federal government investing in you to, to create more jobs. Exactly. And it makes so much sense for startups to work with their local small business development center because you guys have answers to questions they don't even know to ask. Exactly. We do run into that. A lot of them really come in very kind of naive and they think that, hey, I heard the government gives out grants. Well, yes, but it's not like what you think it is. And the other thing that's happened recently is there's been more pressure by Congress to prove that these SBIRs are actually turning into jobs. So um, we now really teach that you want to finish that whole process of business model canvas before you even start to apply. Because in the application process now, they're getting much more rigorous about, hey, we want to know how you're going to go to market, how much investment are you planning on getting to do this, and, and really understand that full business plan, not just, hey, here's my research idea, you know, because I'm, I'm going after, because it is a research grant, but it's also really a business grant. You know, it's kind of both. Right. And people want to track where the money's going. Yes. They want to know. But when you spend the money and you discover something doesn't work, that's mm -hmm. very important too. Mm -hmm. That's part of learning. Learning what doesn't work is just as important as learning right. what does work. So that the next folks who come along have a better yeah. handle on stuff, right? Yeah, the other thing that I remind my tech startups was when I did uh, new product development for large companies like Bristol Myers Squibb, we only launched 0.5% of our seed ideas. 0.5, okay? So it took 200 seed ideas to actually have one launch. Uh, we had a pretty high success rate because we went through a lot of research. Uh, by the time we went to market, you know, we were we were probably in the 60 to 65% success rate uh, because we went through that rigor. Uh, where many tech startups want to take this one idea, and I call it call that run to the goal line. You know, bypass all those stage gates and and you know, and those places where you're saying you know you've done the research and have the evidence this is going to work. Uh, so that's that's a big challenge. Right. Well, thank you so much, Ed Lehu from the Missouri Small Business Development Center. We'll put information in the comments on how people can contact you and maybe some of the seminars that are coming up. Great. This, well, thanks for having me. Yeah. And this is Mary Scott with Business Riff. I want startups to be wildly successful. And one of the best things you can do to accomplish that is book a call with me at businessriff.com. And join us again next time for Stuck, Time to Improv.